Hi, this is Mike Paulson. Welcome to another one of my uh, Bible study video presentations of the risen Savior, Jesus Christ, only from the King James 1611 Bible, rightly dividing the word of truth in the King James 1611 Bible, according to the Apostle Paul only, teaching the simplicity that is in Christ by presenting Paul's greater commission, emphasizing the goodness of God, during this dispensation of the grace of God, as we will soon be leaving these latter times, either us through being taken up or people hanging on to going on to the last days. In this series, we're going to continue comparing seriously important verses from a King James Bible with today's modern Bibles. And I'll show you just how dangerous their modern interpretations are and how these changes actually prepare and present a false Christianity that is just preparing today's modern church-going congregation to worship Antichrist with all kinds of music during the coming time of the Great Tribulation. Now today, we're going to look at the word follow. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. What does a modern Bible change that word follower, follow? Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Well, I'll tell you what, they change it to the word imitate, and they tell you to imitate God since you are the children he loves. Can you imitate God? Well, let's proceed into this thing and let me show you what they do with the word follow and how they change it to imitate. This is an amazing change. This was one of the first changes I recognized many, many, many years ago. Follow. That's what the King James Bible says. Imitate are what all sorts of various Bibles say in these modern texts there. Those are just some of the lists that's up there. Okay. By the way, the first one is the big one. Imitate God on the cover on the cover slide there. Wherefore, Paul says, I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Simple enough. Modern Bibles change that to therefore I urge you to imitate me. They're teaching people that we need to imitate Paul. And if you read Paul's life, which we have taught in Acts chapter 9 through 28, just see what his life was all about, not just his doctrine, but his life. I do not want to change any of my life to imitate Paul. The poor guy had where they hated him. They tried to kill him with a fantastic message of the goodness of God that he had. Uh, the Jews tried to kill him. The Jews stirred up the Gentiles to get mad at him. Um, it's an amazing story, but it's an amazing study. Read Acts chapter 9 through 28 and see what, what it would be to imitate Paul. No, I have zero desire to imitate Paul. That's just craziness. He says it again in Corinthians 11, 1, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So to follow, okay, we're not to imitate Paul. You're going to imitate Paul. We're not going to imitate Christ, but that's what they say. Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. So Paul, according to these modern Bibles, teach that, well, Paul imitated Christ. And so... Uh, isn't it crazy? And now I know pastors will say, well, you need to be like Christ. That's not scriptural. That is not true. You cannot be like Christ. You just can't. You cannot imitate Christ. An imitator of Christ is an antichrist, an imitator, a fake. Philippians 3.17, brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk, those people that look to Paul, and today, those people that look to a King James Bible, the goodness of God, and they try to do the right thing, but we don't, and and uh, all the stuff that goes on, uh, they have, they have uh, us for an, an sample to them. So Paul says, followers together of me, mark them which walk, find those Paul followers. So as you have us, Paul, Paul and his people back there, for an end sample. Now, an end sample shows us what's going on. We don't need to imitate and sample. You imitate examples. Paul is not giving us an example. He's given us unsample. He is there not to show us how he does it, so be like him. He's an ensample. He shows us what he's doing, and you can do, and that's just where you're at, trying to, try to do the best you can with what you see Paul doing. You don't have to be a Paul or a Christ imitator. 
Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. Now, we don't need their example, just an end sample. An example is follow, imitate. End sample is a guide. First Thessalonians, and you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. And we're talking, if you look back, he's looking, talking about Paul, Silvanus, and Timotheus, Timothy. So there are people that follow Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy. How do you know if you're following Silvanus? Now, what have you read that he wrote? But see, during his day, uh, people followed those guys. Modern Bible says, you became imitators of us and of the Lord. So you imitated the Lord? For you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And yet, in these churches today, pastors teach, there's no reason to suffer if you've got the mark of God or the seal of God. You won't be suffering today or in the tribulation. If you do, it's because you're disobedient. Crazy contradictions. If you want to talk about contradictions, their doctrine contradicts something fierce. There is not one contradiction in that King James Bible. First Thessalonians chapter 2. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. Ye also have suffered the like things of their own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. So you see, even in Paul's day, there were churches of God, not the, not the denomination, church of God, but there were churches of God which were in Christ Jesus. So if we were all together, we could have a local assembly. Not a problem. I'm not against local assemblies, but these churches today are not in Christ Jesus. They're not teaching the truth. They're not teaching Paul. They're not using the King James Bible, rightly dividing or anything, they're using all kinds of music. No, they're not in Christ Jesus. Like I said, if we were together, we would have a local church. Why not? Wouldn't that be fun? Probably not, <laughs> but we could. For you, brothers and sisters, the modern Bible say, become imitators of God's churches in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus. You suffered from your own people the same thing those churches suffered from the Jews. Crazy stuff. Now, this is tribulational stuff because it applies to the coming tribulation as it did in the Bible days, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. See, that's not, we're not inheriting those promises. That's, that's Jewish stuff in the Gospels and the Old Testament. That's, that's for Jews. We're not their promised inheritors. Those Jews during the tribulation who follow Abraham's faith and patience. That's what that chapter is all about. Their Bible says, so that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit their promises. Well, slothful is not sluggish. Slothful means you're just downright lazy and just, just slow as a sloth, you know, slothful. Sluggish, you're just taking your time, you know, you just be rebellious, you can be whatever. Slothful is different, that ye be not slothful. And this is in Peter. And who is he that will harm you? If ye be followers of that which is good, but and if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye. Well, what we're looking at here in Peter, husbands and wives living righteously during the tribulation and in Bible days. Peter is a, is a book that I learned this a long time ago, trying to counsel divorces and situations that were you know abusive and stuff. Uh, these pastors go to Peter and put the heavy guilt trip on people and the fear of God into these marriages. Uh, no divorce. I mean, it's just it's another bunny trail I could go down. But uh, Peter is not written to us. It's written to the Jews, and it's not for us even today. It's just for, for learning about what it's going to be like during the tribulation. Today, divorce? Sure, if it needs to be. And if you get when you shouldn't have, it's still okay, you know, from that standpoint. You're not going to be uh, punished by God. Um, but in the tribulation? Oh, yeah. No divorce. You better learn how to live together. Anyway, bunny trail that one. Who is going to harm you if, if you are eager to do good? See, we're looking at marriage situations here now. Now, who will harm you if you become imitators of that which is good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Oh, the arrogancy and the, and the, and the conceit that takes place in Christian homes today, uh, divorce situations or 
or unhappy situations. Um, it's just amazing what they do with the scriptures. Okay, back to the King James Bible. Follow. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Paul, Silvanus, and Timotheus again. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you. Behave not, behave in disorderly. And compare that to the word idle. Quite a bit of difference there. We were not disorderly among you, Paul says. And they just say idle. Can't imagine that. Second Thessalonians. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an ensample unto you to follow us. Again, we look to Paul, Silvanus, and Timotheus as an ensample. And, of course, they're going to use the word imitate and example. We did this to give you an example to imitate. So there's the difference. You have an example, you imitate it. You have an end sample, and you try to follow it. But you don't have to imitate it. Not because we didn't have a right to insist on financial support. Uh, where does that come from? Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an ensample unto you to follow us, okay? And they say, well, we did this to give you an example to imitate. Now, well, that's crazy. Not because we didn't have a right to insist on financial support. There you go. Money, money, money. Well, if you guys have any extra finances sitting around, I mean, I'd be glad to take it, take it off your hands. But I'm not doing this, and none of this has to do with insisting on financial support. I don't know how they even get that out of that section there. Okay, moving along. Now back to the tribulation, Hebrews 13. You hear me talk about this all the time. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Well, okay. The faith from tribulation leaders, which is what they'll be looking at. But today, pastors claim this today for their own people's, for their people's own faith. Is to, is to imitate the pastor's faith. Remember your leaders who spoke God's message to you. No, I want a pastor that preaches the word of God to me. Remember your leaders who spoke God's message to you. Reflect on the outcome of their lives and imitate their faith. Isn't that just amazing stuff, how they even think they could imitate God, imitate Christ, imitate Paul, imitate the church, and imitate their pastor. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. Now, when you look at this in tribulation context, even in the King James Bible, that's what that's geared for. Yeah, if they're doing something wrong, there's a pretty good chance that they don't even know God, and God doesn't know them. And yet you hear that all the time with people today, well, you just did that, I don't think you're even saved. Well, I think in a lot of cases, people aren't, especially in the modern Christian world. But for them to put that on somebody, those are tribulational stuff. But see, they'll say in churches today, beloved, do not imitate evil, but imitate good. He who does good is of God. He who does evil has not seen, discerned, or experienced God, has enjoyed no vision of him, and does not know him at all. Aren't you glad you don't have to memorize out of these modern Bibles? Beloved, do not imitate evil, but imitate good. He who does good is of God. He who does evil has not seen God. Now it puts the whole thing together. He who does good is of God. He who does evil has not seen, discerned, or experienced, has not seen God, has enjoyed no vision, no vision of him. There's that vision stuff. And how do you get this vision? God gives it to you in part, all that kind of stuff. They're so mixed up. But again, uh, the verses in Hebrews 13, 7 there, and 17, by the way, and 3 John, that's from a King James Bible, that is tribulational stuff. Amazing stuff, isn't it? Now, from here out, we're going to switch from the word imitate. They use the word pursue. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. And they say, make sure that no one ever pays back one wrong with another. Instead, always try to do what is good for each other 
and everyone else. See that no one repays evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good for one another and for all. So they're trying to get you to pursue something instead of follow. There's a little difference there. Follow is the correct word. Follow is the right word. Because we are dead unto the law and dead unto sin, so we don't have to imitate or copy it. Just mature and follow the best we can. We have the judgment seat of Christ to deal with our works eventually. So we follow. We, we, there's an example that we're trying to follow. Pursue, to follow as an example, to imitate, to endeavor to attain, to strive to reach or gain. To them, if they don't attain, they don't live that obedient life, then they don't have God's blessing. So it is still the law of liberty. So they're going to pursue it. They're going to chase after it, hoping they can get it and imitate it. No, we just try to follow. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. And they say, but you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue, chase after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Meekness is not gentleness. And gentleness certainly isn't meekness. They just change so many things. 2 Timothy 2, flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Their Bibles, flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Pursue it. Good luck. Hope you get there. Remember, all things come short, right? You're never going to get there. Don't you think you'd rather have Christ who makes you get there like that? Oh. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith, which, by the way, we have attained because God made us that way. Anyway, what then shall we say, modern Bible, that the Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have obtained it, a righteousness that is by faith. There's a difference of faith and by faith. Even the righteousness which is of faith, yes, the faith of Jesus Christ. A righteousness that they say is by faith, yeah, their own faith. We are the faith of Jesus Christ, and they try to make it all happen by their faith. I could bunny trail all of this so much here. Hebrews 12, 14. Now we're into the tribulation again. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. That's tribulation. That's the way it'll be. They better follow peace with all men. That's going to be tough. Pursue peace with everyone, it says, and holiness. So pursue holiness. Without it, no one will see the Lord. That's true, even today. But see, Christ makes us holy and without blame. That's amazing. They have to pursue it and hope they find it. Because if they don't, they will not see the Lord. And in the tribulation, yes, they need to find that holiness. They will have to be that way. Okay, try to live in peace with all people and try to live lives free from sin. If anyone's life is not holy, he will never see the Lord. Right, that's tribulation, but the way they put it is horrible. Pursue peace? No, follow peace and holiness. They're going to have to be holiness to Christ. Again, makes us holy. Now, during the tribulation, Christ will not make them holy. They will have to Walk that holy ground, that, that holy walk. They will have to have their confession, 1 John 1, 9. If they take the mark, according to Hebrews chapter 6, it's over for them. They can't untake it. All sorts of things we can learn from that. And then 1 Peter chapter 3, let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Well, eschew is to flee from, to avoid. Is that a better word? Of course, that's a better word. I'll show you here. Ensu is to follow in a train of events or course of time to succeed. So in the tribulation, let people flee, avoid, shun, as to eschew evil. Stay away from it and do good. Let him seek peace and they can find it by following what uh, Revelation says. Here it says, and from my lab, must turn from evil. To turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. Look for it. Keep going. Look for it. No, we just follow it. 
Anyway. Hope you don't think that's nitpicking because it's not at all. God knows what words he wanted, and he put them in there at the start, and he's kept them all these years. These modern Bibles, they're just absolutely awful. And you've heard me talk about this, so because of that magnificent goodness of God, taught only by Paul and found only in the King James Bible, I sure hope this Bible study video presentation has brought you to a new level of biblical understanding, or at least have created in you a desire for new spiritual spiritual awareness. Feel free to email me if you need some have some questions, or maybe you just need to receive that new beginning with the soul saving and quickening. Not born again nonsense. That's Jewish stuff. To, talking about the nation of Israel, they were born in Genesis twelve, and they need to get born again because they're really messed up in the Old Testament. You need that soul-saving quickening based on what you have just learned from the risen Christ through Paul and, of course, as found only in the King James Bible. Quickened. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart. By the way, that confess is not confessing your sins. Confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. And so if you believe that Christ... Uh, was raised from the dead, why wouldn't you want to study what he teaches after he's been risen? For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Confessing your sins does not make you a Christian. It's to confess to thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Totally different. In whom, Jesus, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, King James Bible, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also at ye believed. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, not the seal of God or the mark of God. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. There's no uh, seal button that you have attached to you. You're not protected from suffering during these days, and you're not protected from suffering during the tribulation. They just want you to think so. Remember, they put you into that bondage of, of corruption again. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, now he makes you alive. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace, ye are saved. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, spiritual operations, not because of your water, baptism, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, past, present, and future. Remember, it is not the severity of God that leads anyone or you to repentance today. It's the goodness of God that leadeth thee to repentance. And it is a peaceful and excitingly joyful repentance with the riches of the full assurance of understanding, especially these days, and the peace of God that passeth all understanding. However, you need to know that this marvelous goodness of God ends during the time of great tribulation, which then will be the wrath of God. And I do believe that this time of great tribulation appears to be coming around the mountain, and the Antichrist will be riding one false white horse. Revelation chapter 6, 1 Peter 5. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Just read Matthew 24 to see what's going to be going on. You're not going to want to be here. I promise you. But alas, you still have time to be comforted by the scriptures today. The goodness of God is still to any and all Gentiles during this dispensation of the grace of God. And if you do already know the risen Savior, Jesus Christ, as presented to you by Paul from a King James Bible, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Got to keep trying. That which is perfect came in 1611. It was and still is the King James Bible, our final authority in all matters of faith and practice. The anointing, that comes later. There's nobody anointed today but that Bible. And of course, believe it or not, 